staying in the top end and the community of Wadair is one of the only Aboriginal townships where the majority of residents speak the local language. And it's partly thanks to the efforts of a non-Indigenous woman, Sister Teresa Ward. Sister Ward has been recognised for her work in this year's Australia Day Honours. But Sister Ward believes it is Indigenous languages that should be celebrated as a national treasure. Part of the world's oldest living culture, the people of Wadair are celebrating. Traditional songs and dances are used to mark a very new ceremony for this land. On behalf of Territorians... The whole community is gathered for the Order of Australia medal ceremony here in the Thamara region. We are here to recognise Sister Teresa Ward and to bestow upon her one of the highest forms of honours under the Australian system of honours and awards. The sisters have worked so hard for many years for Aboriginal people. Catholic Sister Tess Ward is receiving the honours, but she says she's accepting the medal on behalf of the community. That's why she's requested to have the ceremony here. It's among the people here that I am awarded this uh, medal today because uh, if they hadn't had a language, I wouldn't have the opportunity to have learnt Indigenous languages. We're always doing that. We can dance close to that person who's having a special day for that. Sister Tess Ward has spent her life developing bilingual literacy programs, not just here in the Daly River region, but also with the Tiwi Islanders, some of whom flew to Wadair for the ceremony and in the fledging nation of East Timor. It's actually been an overwhelmingly joyful day for me. And I could see that they meant that because they came. You know, Indigenous people don't do anything unless they really want to do it. The community of Wadair has a long history with agents of the Catholic Church. Arriving by boat in 1935 at the invitation of the Australian government, the Roman Catholics started the Thamara Region Mission. Seven language groups from 20 different clans were moved from the initial settlement site to the township now known as Wadair. The area was and still is Kadu Chittai Diminin land and the traditional owners speak Murin Patha. They were in a position of power from, from then on, really. Um, their language was chosen as the um, one to teach bilingu bilingual education in. These images show early days in the township of Ware. As the community developed, Murin Patha became the common tongue. The impacts on language were devastating, with four of the original Wadae dialects expected to be lost by 2020. All those people taught me and they're all dead. And all their children uh, basically speak Murimbatta as their favoured language. There aren't the resources to commit to all the community's languages. The school in Wadae is still focused on teaching in the language of the land Murun Patha, but it's a costly and time-consuming exercise. There's nowhere that we can hop on the internet and just order books in Murun Patha. This is the powerhouse of the program, the Literacy Centre. Local experts are drawing and painting to create storybooks and animations for the children to read. The resources are tailored to students and tell local cultural stories. These kids are like any kids. They like anything that's bright and colourful. But I think mostly because what we write and what we prepare for the classes and their additional reading 
are things that relate to their culture and their environment, their worldview. These primary school children are in their Tuesday morning language class. Students learn mainly in Moranpatha until year two when they learn to write in English. The majority of children here come into school not knowing English and therefore all the research tells you the language to teach a child to read, to, to learn to read in is of course their mother tongue, the tongue that they speak. Rolled out in the 1970s, bilingual education allows children to learn in their mother tongue. The program has been controversial from the start and was all but wiped out in 2009 when the Territory Government mandated the first four hours of every school day be delivered in English. I thought the bilingual program was going to be doomed. <laughs> The bilingual school in Ware is one of the nine that survived in the Territory. The Education Department doesn't actually have a policy on bilingual education now, but Catholic schools have the independence to create their own programs. Um, of the 250 Aboriginal languages across Australia, less than 20 still remain strong. As you can see, culture is thriving here in Ware and so is the language. Murrumpatha is considered one of those strong languages. But linguists say that a national approach needs to be taken to Aboriginal languages. Dr Ford is calling for all Australian students to learn an Indigenous language. It would give them an enormous amount of respect for Aboriginal people. It would teach them a, a lot. It would um, maybe uh, make them realise how alert to everything in the world Aboriginal people are. <laughs> Sister Tess says there's a spark of hope as Indigenous languages were recently included in the national curriculum and added as potential senior subject choices. But she says there's still a lot of work to do and she'll continue doing it. I don't want to be a person who in 50 years time have to apologise to an Indigenous group here to say we pushed English and made you such good speakers of English that you lost your language and I just couldn't live with myself.